Okay, when I taught you multi-threading, it was last class or two classes ago, two small things I forgot to mention. First of all, in your textbook, if you go over to this unit, which is Architecture Concepts, which is the unit we recently completed, uh, if you go to the multi-threading uh, topic here, this is, I don't know what this gentleman's real name is. I think it might be Naveen Reddy, actually. Anyway, his, uh, his channel is called Telesco on YouTube, and he has some nice stuff on there, especially because it's Java-focused, fits well for us. And he has these two videos on multi-threading, and this one you probably don't need to watch because we've kind of gone over the runnable interface and all that other stuff. But this one, I, I didn't cover this material in class. I'll talk a little bit about it today. But he has a 10-minute discussion about the theoretical or philosophical ideas of why you want to multi-thread. And um, so if you're looking for, like, when is it the right time to use multi-threads, this is a really good video that describes that. Uh, one of the, so let's talk a little bit about one of the quiz questions that asks why you want to multi-thread. And for the most part, you came up with some good answers. There's one other reason why we want to multi-thread, which I did not discuss. It was kind of important, so I'm just going to hit it today, and then we'll move on to our next topic, which is uh, big O. So... Okay, let's say we had a cell phone over here, right? We have a cell phone over here. And um, let's say that you're running some app on your cell phone and all of a sudden you need to go to the internet and get some data, right? Like there's a database out here that you need to fetch. So you need to go out here and here the data is stored in a cloud somewhere. And so eventually what you want to do is you want to, you want to send a request out there and then you want to wait for the information to come back. And my question is, can your app and the request for the thread to, uh, sorry, let me start over. Your, your app and the request for information, can it run on the same thread? What do you think, Mr. Frenovic? Yeah, the answer is no. And the question is why? OK. So here, when you're running inside the app, you know, your instructions take like a few milliseconds here or there, maybe even microseconds. When you launch this request for information, how long typically will it take for the internet to respond? What are we talking about here? Mila, what do you think? Like a few milliseconds? It, it will be a few milliseconds. It could be, in theory, it could be like if you're in a tunnel and you have to wait to, to leave the tunnel or whatever. It could be like a couple of seconds even. The other thing you have to keep in mind is that it may never come back because your connection might be spotty with the internet or whatever. So what you want to do is you want to launch that request in a separate thread so as to not tie up your main application. Uh, otherwise, what's going to happen is that the this, this app will actually freeze waiting for this data to come back, and you don't want that. So this is another important example of why you want to create a separate thread and launch this request. And you want to set your application up so that you can handle the response no matter, you know, you, you're off doing some other thing, and you want to be able to handle it. Uh, no matter when it comes back to you. I, I liken this to you being at home and working on stuff at home, and then all of a sudden you realize, oh, I've got to buy something from UPS. So then you launch the request on your computer. You don't like immediately run to your mailbox and then sit there for three days waiting for the UPS delivery person to show up, right? You, you go about your business, and then when UPS has the delivery for you, right, then they knock on your door and you're prepared to take that delivery at that time. And that's that's the analogy here.